Hey everybody, on this week's episode of American Land Seller, we catch up with Brett Vidian, broker owner of Remax Integrity in Marion, Illinois. And Brett is an interesting guy. He has spent uh, 34 years hunting, fishing, and managing properties for deer, turkey, and wild hogs. He's been a real estate agent uh, for about the same time as I have, about six years. And uh, born and raised in, in Hudson, Florida, but now lives in Southern Illinois. And so it's going to be exciting to uh, catch up with uh, with uh, Brett. He knows a lot more about timber and uh, and uh, food plots and stuff like that than I do. So, so I hope you guys uh, enjoy the show. Hello, everyone. My name is Kobe Richardson, and welcome to the American Land Seller Podcast. We are so excited you decided to join us today on our journey to discover new and interesting things about. Everything land from sales, investments, ownership, regulations, and so, so much more. Our mission is to connect you to the top folks in the country where it has to do with land so we can learn more about everything from agriculture to land development. Okay, Kobe and our special guests, let's get started. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the American Land Seller Podcast. I am your host, Kobe Rickardson. And with me today, I'm pretty excited um, to have this guy. Um, he's, a, he's a hunting specialist, a, a recreational land specialist for sure in Southern Illinois, from Marion, Illinois. Um, it's uh, Brett Vidian uh, from Remax Integrity, right, Brett? Brett, I'm sorry. Yes, sir, Kobe. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. It's going to be a challenging interview for me because I have an agent named Rhett. <laughs> he just uh, po- poked his head in my office, so I'm like, oh, man. Uh, but uh, uh, You know so- me. I answered anything as long as it's not late for supper, you know? <laughs> That's right. That's right. We talked about on uh, uh, one of my previous podcasts, we had a guy on, and he was hoping he didn't cuss the whole time. And so I, I, we're trying to figure out whether or not we can, we can do like uh, Greg Gutfeld does and have like five or seven cuss words that you can throw in and get away with. <laughs> but we're trying to, trying to keep it clean if we can. But uh, Yeah. That's, uh... So... Uh, so yeah, just uh, if you got if you can tell us just a little bit about yourself and what's going on with you and what's going on in uh, Southern Illinois. Well, Southern Illinois, uh, we're doing really well with land sales. Um, where I'm at, I am located right on the edge of the Shawnee National Forest, which is a 280,000 acre um, national forest that encompasses eight counties in Southern Illinois. Um, huge recreational area they have a lot of horse trails Um, they have what they call a nine day ride twice a year brings a lot of horse people into the area Uh, the hiking and uh, mountain biking trails are also a big thing we have a lot of parks um, in them the recreational parks with hiking trails garden of the gods um, pounds hollow which is actually really cool it's uh probably like a I don't know, five to ten acre lake, kind of almost looks like you're in the mountains, but we don't have mountains here. You know, I think we're only about seven, eight hundred foot of elevation, you know, Um, me coming from Florida, like we call them the hills now that I lived here. But when I first got (laughs) here, they kind of look like mountains, especially when you started walking up them, you know. (laughs) Yeah. But um, there's a lot. And that that Shawnee National Forest is all public hunting, too. So that's a big thing for us. You know, we sell a lot of property that backs up to the Shawnee or surrounded by Shawnee. You know, a guy could come in and buy him a 50 acre tract that might back up to several thousand acres of Shawnee National Forest. So, you know, a 50 acre tract is going to hunt like two, 2,050 acres, you know. So it's a big benefit. Um, great deer hunting. Um, we've had some Boone and Crockett deer. Matter of fact, I took a Boone and Crockett off the Shawnee National Forest myself about. Oh, wow. five six years ago so a uh, great place a um, little background on me I was born and raised in Florida um, about 35 miles north of Tampa and a little town called Newport Ritchie our claim to fame is we have one of the only hooters that's on the water <laughs> <laughs> um, did a lot of hunting and fishing my dad started taking me fishing from the time i could uh hold a fishing pole he started taking me to the hunting camp when i was five um i 
was very involved in hunting leases in Florida. I grew up hunting public land. I bought my first piece of property at age 27. A buddy of mine went in on 50 acres. It was in a 2,500 acre track. And uh, I got into doing food plots and harvesting uh, a little bit of timber and stuff like that. We went in, harvested some of the young pines, got them out of the way to be able to open up food plots. And I would go up there and plant different types of food plots. Got involved with doing forestry plans, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, a lot of people don't think of Florida as a whitetail place, but it was, and we actually produced some pretty good deer off of it, you know. Uh, I just had to contend with all the wild hogs. Yeah. <laughs> we uh, we lived down in uh, southeastern Georgia for a while, and I always told the guys down there that they they would go uh, go deer hunting, and I'd say, well, that's rabbit hunting where I'm from. But, yeah, they do <laughs> have some down there. They seem like they were a little smaller than what I was used to. But <laughs> Yeah, the body size is definitely different. You know, when you got something that's living off of acorns and palmetto berries, you know, it's it's a big difference compared to eating soybeans and corn. <laughs> yeah, right. um, yeah, but you know there is some counties. I mean, if uh, if somebody was looking to invest in some property, Central Florida, uh, Alachua County. If you look at them, they've produced some 150, 160 inch bucks. The soil there is really good. That's one of your areas where they do a lot of row cropping and stuff like that. You get peanuts, some corn, uh, watermelons, cantaloupes, tobacco. That's that's kind of one of your big crop areas. So the soil's really good, kind of um, Alabama, what they call the black belt, you know, sure. how that's got really good soil. So a lot of like that. And then, of course, when you get up into North Florida and you get up around um, the Florida-Georgia line, up around ginning, stuff like that, where they do a lot more corn and, you know, crops and stuff like that, there's there's been some big deer up around that way. And, of course, when you get up into Panhandle, around the Alabama border, you know, they get some bigger deer. But... You know, it's a, it's a cool thing. I ended up here in Southern Illinois uh, 13 years ago. Wow. I worked at the phone company, uh, Verizon. I was a lineman, and I'd been bow hunting up here for a couple years uh, in a little town called Golconda down on the Ohio River Banks in the heart of the Shawnee hunting a farm and chasing those big deer. We'd drive up here and spend a week or two hunting public land, and then we met a farmer and, and were able to hunt his land and public. And uh, when we had the, uh, are we allowed to use the word recession? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's yeah. something we're supposed to use yet. Yeah, uh, I know, right? Really so we to. had the uh, 2008 real estate market crash. You know, everybody knows about that one. And uh, yeah. of course, Florida, you know, lived off of real estate and, uh, I guess, uh, entertainment, you know, people yeah. coming to the area to, to visit and that kind of shut it down. And I thought I might possibly get laid off at the phone company. And I started looking around for places to transfer and lo and behold was there was one in Marion, Illinois. <laughs> so is your, is your fan, is your wife from Florida too then? And uh, you no, located her no, when I moved up here, uh, I mean, I was married and, uh, a couple years after we got up here, we got divorced, and uh, I kind of went off and did my own thing, and uh, I met my present fiance through real estate. Oh, wow. Believe it or not. Yeah, and I was not in real estate in Florida. I got into real estate up here. Uh, I got my license in 2017, so I'm going on six years, a little over six years, somewhere around there. Um I used to do some uh, Christian ministry through motorcycles, and uh, there was a lady in there who was a realtor, and she found out I had a strong construction background. We grew up in Florida, and all us country folks, we all had trades. I was a mechanic before I become a phone guy, and uh, <laughs> I had buddies that were roofers and buddies that were framers and guys that do electrical and all that stuff and that's kind of how I grew up at the hunting camp too they were all the same way everything we did there all our cabins we built you know so it was great you know I'm kind of jack all trades master of none as they say you know um but I've got had a pretty good background so she started dragging me around to houses all the time to look at stuff and for like two years she's like you should get your real estate license you should get your real estate license and uh 
you know, the more I thought about it, and you know, working for a corporate company and the good old micromanaging that they yeah. they have, it started getting worse. And I was like, you know, maybe I should. And it, of course, kind of one idiot growing up in Florida and watching how Florida developed and built here in Southern Illinois. Uh, Marion was like what Florida was when I was a kid. And over the last 13 years, I've watched this place develop and grow like Florida is doing. Not as fast, not as quick. I mean, we don't have 20,000 home subdivisions, you know, but we are getting a lot of subdivisions where they come in and there's, you know, 100, 200, 300 homes. You know, cornfields are being turned into 20 home subdivisions yeah. and stuff like that, which... I'm sure we'll probably talk about it later. It goes into transitional land properties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I thought, you know, maybe I should get into this real estate thing. And lo and behold, I got into it and found that I loved it. And I have a niche for doing, you know, the hunting and farm properties. And I like doing commercial a lot too. And, you know, we do residential. And it's a small rural area. So you kind of got to do everything if you want to make a living in it. But uh Two years ago, I put my faith in God, and I walked away from the phone company after 16 years, and me and uh, my fiance Lisa James, we opened up a Remax, we ran it for a year, and then I walked away, and here we are, three years later, living the dream. Yeah, that's cool. And so you did, uh, did you do, like a lot of people, did you work both places for a little bit while you're trying to get your stuff ramped up? Yes, I did. I spent four years. I'd probably work 50 hours a week uh, at the phone company and put another 30, 40 hours a week in doing real estate. You know, yeah. um, the guys used to tease me I worked with. I'd be hanging 30 foot up in the air off a pole with my Bluetooth working a deal on a house while I was fixing somebody's <laughs> Internet. <laughs> that's, that's priceless. <laughs> yeah, I, I am definitely the king of multitasking. <laughs> That's really good. Well, we're going to take a break right now, um, uh, but we'll be right back with uh, Brett Vidian from Remax Integrity, uh, Marion, Illinois. It's been fun talking to him, getting to know him a little bit. And uh, when we come back, I think we're going to talk a little bit about uh, transitioning land and some recreational property stuff. So hold on. I'll be right back. Today's episode is brought to you by Remax Home Farm and Ranch. Remax Home Farm and Ranch is the premier marketing and selling real estate company in Nebraska and South Dakota. You can find all the great Remax agents and their listings at homefarmranch.com. That's homefarmranch.com. Uh, you can look up and see what they're up to and uh, follow along on all the things that they have going on. Once again, this episode is brought to you by Remax Home Farm and Ranch, and you can find their listings and their agents at homefarmranch.com. Once again, home farmranch.com Brett, you know, uh, you do an awful lot with uh, transitioning land from uh, from like pasture, corn ground, different things like that um, into like maybe residential lots or commercial lots or, or things like that. Can you talk just a little bit about the, the process with that? What goes into I know there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. I've done some more uh, primitive uh, subdivisions and stuff, but I've never really gotten into the the having to deal with all the, the plumbing and the water and all that stuff. So if you can talk a little bit about that, um, that'd be yeah. awesome. Yep, definitely. So I just recently sold a 12-acre piece of property that was all planted in corn, and it backed up to a existing small subdivision. So there just so happened to be a lift station there for the sewage. So I called an engineering company um, that had engineered that lift station, did a little research, found out that it could support another 30, 40, 50 homes, etc. cetera. And uh, so I marketed that 12 acres as a piece of property that could be bought and turned into a subdivision. And uh, I'm in a BNI networking group. Uh, that we do on Thursdays and there was a builder in there and I've done a lot of work with him and he's a good builder. So I approached him and said, Hey, you know, would you be interested in doing a subdivision? And he said, yeah. So I took him out there and looked at it and uh, we come to an agreement. He bought the piece of property. Um, we had a local engineering company here went in and we were able to put in two roads and 
split it up into 30 lots to be able to build 30 homes. Hmm. So the next step was I got a hold of a guy, a friend of mine who does all my excavation work on farms, commercial properties, everything. We got him out there. We looked at it. Um, he's done that before so he'll be running all our roads putting in our sewer lines uh, we have to get a hold of our local electric company to come in do the electric um, we'll be speaking with the uh, phone company or internet provider company that could come in and set up their infrastructure there to be able to provide internet for those people um, and we should hopefully be breaking ground on that here in the next month or so um, of course you got some small municipalities around that you kind of have to go sit down and go through a couple meetings and stuff like that and make sure they're okay with that and get their blessing um, you know as we talked about earlier this area is growing so you know it's not going to be hard for it to turn it down they're looking to be able to provide housing for people moving into this area um it's it's really neat um this builder and i you know we're friends so him and i have actually sat down and i've got into the whole construction end part of it with them too we've actually sat down and designed four different house plans we have a couple that are going to be in that 1500 to 1600 square foot three bedroom two bath um and then we're doing some in that anywhere from 1700 to 1900 square foot where you could bump it up and have a little bit bigger house maybe a three bedroom two bath with an office or a fourth bedroom uh, we've looked at changing the truss package and being able to do a bonus room over the top of the garage as well um, because you're not going to be able to put in like a pole barn or anything like that the lots are you know quarter acre lots is what we have them split up into um, so we've kind of come up with that and then you know i had an idea i said well you know these aren't going to be a custom home we don't want to get into custom homes but they're not going to be a spec home bare bones either so i said sure. you know how about we come in and let's do a package you know you got your basic home here but hey we can do an upgrade instead of uh using you know like uh bat insulation in the walls we can do three and a half inches of closed cell spray foam um, we can upgrade from an R38 in the attic to an R49, you know, like up here in the Midwest is an R38, which surprises me because of the cold weather. Where I come from down in Florida, we're at an R49. Um, so when I built my house, you know, that's what I had done in it. So, we, you know, we have an upgrade package like that. We can go from your standard 19 sear uh, HVAC system up to a 21 or 22 sear to make it more energy efficient. Um, oh. Stepping it up with, you know, uh, have two different sets of cabinets, you know, um, they're still box cabinets, but you know, you can have a higher end box cabinet if you want granite or Corian, we'll have that worked in there. Bump up your uh, trim package instead of doing, you know, your basic three inch baseboards and, and inch and a half window casings or two inch window casings, you can do a five inch baseboard and a three inch window casing, you know, um, maybe a little crown molding stuff like that where it pops when you walk sure. into the house and and have that set prices you know we allow them to have certain colors that they can pick certain colors for the siding on the outside um do you want a stone package you know with what they would call an eyebrow up over the top of the front of the two-car garage and down the sides and then maybe over on another section of the front of the house um you know like over a bedroom or something like that so you have some stone on it makes it pop we're trying we're doing things that nobody else in this area has done um and stepping up the game to sure. make sure that we move a lot of properties and give people some options because they really don't get a lot you know when it's a bare bones spec it's hey this is what it is take it or leave it you know <laughs> right so so what um so you're when you're thinking of this development stuff i mean i know like if you watch the news and stuff all of a sudden you're you're worried a little bit about what the economy is going to do interest rates are going up um this doesn't you know this is you're you're still pretty strong in your area you feel like in you know in the next couple of years you're not going to have any any like bunch of houses sitting around no um <laughs> i don't think we're gonna i mean I'm going to launch an aggressive marketing package and the first house that we build is actually going to be a model, which nobody's done around here either. Um, so people can come in and actually see how the house is built. We'll have all the, you know, have some easels set up with the different house plans, have all our different 
uh, packages, house colors, all that stuff they can walk through. You know, I've even talked to some lenders. That if they want to come in and spend time there, they can sit down and go through the lending process with them. Sure. Um, same with that's, insurance. That's a great idea. Um, but here's the thing. You and I both know we'll never see two and a half, three and a half percent interest rates again. I mean, that was crazy. I'm 47 years old. When I bought my first house, when I was 27, I paid 8% and I had an 800 credit score and that was the best interest you could get. You know, over the last 30 years, if you look at the average mortgage interest rate, you're anywhere from about 5% to six and a half percent. Yeah. Right now we're floating between six and a half and seven. I'm a huge guy that listens to a lot of real estate podcasts and I, I've been listening to the professionals and I pay attention and read all the NAR articles from the National Association of Realtors. They're saying that we might get maybe one more rate hike and then it's going to start making the curve back downward. The predictions are by the end of 2024, we're going to be at four to four and a half percent. So I educate my clients, whether it's land, commercial, or residential, because it's all it affects everything. You're buying with the intent to refi. Plain and simple. Right. Don't worry about it. If you only got to pay that little bit higher mortgage rate, it's going to be, let's say, if you're looking at a $300,000 house, you know, that you were looking at before, it's going to cost you $200 more a month. Keep in mind, you're only going to have to do that for the next 18 to 24 months, and then you could turn around and refinance. Right. That's not going to be enough to put you in the poor house. You don't have to do that for the next 30 years. And there's other ways around that too. You know, remember the five one arm or the three one buy down with points. Sure. Those loans are gone. You know, nobody remembers what those are anymore. But I mean, that was a big thing back in the day, even in 2008. And that's what got a lot of people in trouble in 2008. But you know, a 5-1 arm, you can go in, especially if you've got a, a local bank that does in-house loans, you might be able to pull a 5-1 arm in at 5 five to 5.5% interest, and that's fixed for five years. So, boom, I just saved you 1% to 1.5% interest over what you were going to try and do with a conventional loan. And when the rates drop, then you're going to turn around and refinance it and be another 1% to 1.5% under that. Yeah. You're golden, you know, yeah, but that's I, where we come in as professionals and have to educate the clients and our buyers on how we can be there to help you, you know. Um, then you have the three one buy down. You could go in and, you know, we can go in and ask the seller, hey, you know, we want uh, $6,000 in prepaids and closings, and we can use that to buy down the interest rate a point to get them into a better interest rate, you know. Yeah. No, that's uh, no, that's that's good news right there. Well, I think it's a good time. We're going to take another break. Um, we'll be right back uh, with uh, Brett Vidian from Remax Integrity in Illinois. Brought to you by Remax Home Farm and Ranch. Remax Home Farm and Ranch is the premier marketing and selling real estate company in Nebraska and South Dakota. You can find all the great Remax agents and their listings at homefarmranch.com. That's home farmranch.com uh, you can look up and see what they're up to and uh, follow along on all the things that they have going on once again this episode is brought to you by remax home farm and ranch and you can find their listings and their agents at home farmranch.com once again home farmranch.com hey everybody welcome back to the american land seller podcast a podcast that uh, we have, are dedicating to learning more about uh, real estate specifically land um, and all the things that go along with it uh, up to and including uh, farming ranching transitional land like we talked about in the early earlier segment um, and uh, even up to regulations and things that are facing us um, but one of the fun uses of land i guess that a lot of people buy and keep it for is for recreational use um, uh, to, to so that they can hunt on it and that they can uh, bring their families and their friends out and uh, enjoy the outdoors um, together and uh, i know brett um, we're here again with uh with Brett Vidian from Remax Integrity in Illinois, and uh, I know Brett, you are a, an avid hunter as well as um, you do some uh, recreational property management and a lot of recreational uh, listing and sales. So, could you just talk just a little bit about 
uh, you know, like what's involved with why is, is recreational, like, first of all, recreational land, the term is not a, an old term. Um, I think the Cabela brothers um, kind of brought that to our attention probably 25, 30 years ago. And, and so as far as real estate goes, it's not a, a really new term. No, no, it's not. And, you know, we can credit the outdoors companies like uh, Mossy Oak. You know, they, they opened up their own uh, real estate division, you know, and then you had Whitetail Properties who had a hunting show that they turned into a um, – real estate show as well and then you know even uh, ray scott the owner of Bassmasters, who turned around and opened up the company uh whitetail institute who does you know they they um sell seed and stuff like that for food plots sure. so no recreational property has been around for a long time and that's actually how i got started probably back uh like i told you i had bought my own piece of property and started learning how to management and spent time with uh guys doing forestry plans and and spending time on uh you know our world wide web course back in that day it was uh dial up almost <laughs> you know that we had to use <laughs> um, researching wow. everything about you know different soils you know and that's that's the thing in our business as well as you know you can look at a piece of land and go oh that's great well is it really what type of soil is it there? You know, is it a sandy loom soil? Is it a clay soil? What's the surety level to it? You know, um, you know, our surety levels, we have an A, B, C, and D. Um, a, of course, being the highest and D right. being the lowest. Here in Southern Illinois, most of our properties are all a class D surety level, which um, is not the best, but I mean, a good farmer can take care of his property and be able to bring that soil up and get better yields and stuff like that. Um, as you go further north, you get up into that Bloomington area. I mean, the soil's black, it's rich as can be, right. and you're a class B surety level. Um, so the recreational properties, you know, a lot of us, when we look at them here, you want to find something that has crops on it, that has timber on it, something that you can do, even CRP, um, which is a program where if you had crops at one time, you can put it into CRP and the government will pay us to grow um, non-invasive species and warm season grasses and stuff like that, which for the recreational guy is great. You know, it, yeah. it produces bedding area for the deer, nesting area for the quail and the turkeys and stuff like that. Um, and then you get money <laughs> to help pay your taxes when you buy a piece of property. Um, you know, ideally, um, if I'm dealing with a serious investor that is looking for an ideal piece of recreational property i'm looking for all of that i'm looking for timber something that has good hardwood mass on it red oaks white oaks um, that produce good acorns and stuff for your deer and your turkey and your animals to eat uh, which will also in turn give you a rate of return not a huge rate of return but it can make you money because you can go in and have select cuts done and if you pay attention to timber values you go in and do that when the values are high and you can get some good money out of that and as a management standpoint you need to do that you know you don't want to have a piece of property that has these huge great beautiful oak trees on it but you're not getting any sunlight to the forest floor which oh, yeah. actually is bad for the property because you need that undergrowth to grow up and it actually that there's a lot of undergrowth that provides food for the deer and the turkeys and the quail um as well so from a management standpoint timbering is a must so you right. can allow the land and allow what the good lord provided for us to do its job and it, right. you know through evolution make things better um right. and then you well, know and i and, and i think that that's kind of i think you see like especially in in some parts of the Northeast and California and stuff where they have wildfires every single year is just a perfect example of the neglecting your forest and then having so many regulations and stuff in place, um, you know, and so you, you don't have, you're not clearing out all the kindling and stuff like that. You're not clearing out and putting in new stuff. You're, you're just, uh, you know, and that's how, and you're right. That's how, that's how God does it. God will, you know, we can either help him or he's going to do it himself. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's a, it gets a little violent when he does stuff. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause uh, <laughs> when lightning, when lightning strikes and causes a fire, you know, it's a, it's a bad thing. You might not be able to contain it, you know, and that's another thing that needs to be done from a management standpoint is controlled burns, you know, controlled yeah, burns are, are a huge thing. And that's sometimes some of the best that can happen. Like I'm a big elk hunter too. And I go out west of Colorado, Montana, Idaho, those fires out there, people complain about them. Oh my God, it's wiped everything out. 
you go back a year or two later and you look where this fire went through and it ravaged a couple thousand acres and it's full of elk and mule deer because you have all these fresh green forbs that are coming back up and growing and it's producing food and it allows for the young trees there could have been some pine seeds there that are going to come back up or birch or poplar or uh, juniper you know whatever whatever that species is just like here you know my own personal property i have 15 acres when i bought it seven years ago built my house i walked it and i'm like i need to do a select cut i'm walking around and i got a ton of these two to three foot tall white oaks and red oaks so after i got mine put into a conservation program and basically i grow oak trees which is what i do i went in and had a select cut done and the timbering is huge for recreational properties and for your deer and turkey and stuff like that because when they come in and timber these guys take the largest part of the tree that's straight and they're going to take it and leave it well then you got these huge treetops there sure. and over time that creates bedding area they grow up you get browse like blackberries and briars and stuff like that that grow up in it and becomes browse. I mean, some of it you got to go in there and cut down too, which creates good firewood, you know, for our wood stoves and our fireplaces. <laughs> and I mean, right. you could even use it for income there, but you have to leave a certain amount of it to have those bedding areas. Well, now you've opened it up. Now you have all this sunlight coming in and those trees, I've literally watched them. I did my select cut five years ago. Those trees have tripled in size just from being able to get that sunlight and getting the nutrition and, and having the air and the sunlight that they need now. You yeah, know? no, it's, that's incredible. I mean, and you know, realistically in my part of the country, and I always love going to like RLI's national land conference and stuff like that, because, you know, like I have never in my life been from where I'm at. And even when I was down in like Georgia and out in Connecticut in the military, like timber has never been anything, you know, other than the, what was the, the show on uh, the discovery channel with the guy with the oh, guys yeah. cutting the trees down. And I, every, every time it seemed like for a while, every time we'd stay at a hotel, I'd binge that, you know, <laughs> that was, that was awesome. some of them guys were crazy, man. When they were out there in Oregon and those mountains doing that stuff, I was like, Whoo. <laughs> yeah, those guys are nuts. These, these guys, I think were from like Georgia or Alabama or somewhere down the Southeast, but they were fun to watch. But you know, it's just like, that's why I love uh, reaching out to people like you, uh, Brett, and just talking to you about your experiences, because that's something I have no experience over. And, you know, I hear about it a lot, you know, just since I've gotten involved in real estate and in a, a more broad land, um, you know, aspect instead of just the, the local area. Um, and, and so it's been pretty fascinating. So uh, just to, you know, we're getting close to the end, but I wanted to just talk to you a little bit about what you have going on right now. Um, you know, uh, what what properties are right there that uh, that are like the ones that are, are you're really focused on in your um, in your inventory right now, and and uh, kind of what else is going on out with uh, with Remax Integrity and your team. So, uh, as far as properties, I have I have three really good properties that I'd like to get moved right now, um, and they vary in different price ranges. Um, one is a transitional property that can be used for hunting and income while you were busy uh, setting up your infrastructure. We've already had an engineer look at it. It can be split up into 40 lots. Some of them are as small as a quarter acre lot. Some are an acre, some are two acres, some are five, six, seven, eight, nine acres. Um, it's kind of split up to where we can do um, some medium sized homes, you know, in that anywhere from right. 1500 square foot up to 1800 square foot. And then, you know, you can do some high end 2000, 3000, 4000 square foot homes, whatever they want. If they're wanting to buy five, six, seven, eight, nine acres up on the northern end of that property, it's a 50 acre piece of property. Um, I'll send you the pictures that you can yeah. put into the podcast. Yeah, we'll put them on. Yep. So that one's already been looked at and we have it all set up by an uh, engineer and, and drawn out. Um, but there's about 10 acres of tillable on that. So it produces a little bit of income. There is some timber on it. Um, that you could probably pull a little bit of income off as well to help pay for your in infrastructure cost. Um, but say if you were going to buy it and sit on it for the next two years because you didn't want to do a whole lot with it, we got 58 acres there. I could find you somebody who would want to lease that as a recreational hunting property. You can pull the income off your uh, crops. I could probably get you another four or five thousand dollars a year for a hunt lease. And now you got money coming in, it's paying the taxes and you're making a little bit of money that you can put aside to help with your infrastructure, you know? So, you know, us as real estate agents, our job is to help our clients, whether Absolutely. they're the seller Amen. or yep. the buyer, you know, and the more educated we are through RLI and, you know, both you and I have both finished all our, 
our classes to get our ALC and we're just yeah, doing our we're paperwork. Not, we're <laughs> not the man. Yeah. You um, hear me, Aubrey? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, that's, that's where that strong education comes in. And, you know, thankfully, I mean, I, I look back at all my years growing up hunting in Florida. And like you said, Florida, Georgia area, you know, a lot of the hunt clubs that I was in were owned by uh, paper companies. You know, and I watched them come in, and it was funny because there was two different paper companies. You had Georgia Pacific, and then I think the other one was St. Joe's. Um, Georgia Pacific would come in, and when they logged something, they would put all the old timber and push it up into these long rows about 25 foot high, and they called them wind rows. And, dude, those things were nasty 10 years down the road because once all that stuff grew up and you're trying to walk through there and you hit one of those 25 foot tall wind rows. <laughs> yeah, <geez. laughs> <laughs> you gotta walk. You gotta. You might have to walk east or west one way and in, in one direction. You know, a quarter mile to find a way to get through it, where it's deteriorated or something like that, or there's a swamp that you can cut through. But then you yeah. go up to North Florida, where the other paper company would do it. When they come in and clear cut it, I mean, boom! It was just a wide open clear cut, and then they would actually go in and do what we call tater rowing, which kind of you know was like doing your rows when you were going to plant uh, strawberries or something like that, and they're built up, and they would plant the pines in that, and it'd be wide open in all pine forest plantation. And it's crazy to, to see it done that way, and actually it makes more sense to me because when they did the wind rows, they would just have guys going out there planting trees, you know, or they would seed it via helicopter and just drop the pine seed like that so it grows all up there's no structure there's no rows and they just grow where they grow yeah. well when you do it with the rows you can these guys they had it figured out they could have higher companies to come in and they would go through the rows and bale the pine straw and sell it so they're making money off of that and then it's way much easier to timber it and i think the pines actually grow quicker and faster because you don't have all the undergrowth and them being kind of mixed up that's fascinating yeah, and it's, oh, uh, helped, it's, it's helped me in my real estate career now that I look back on that as a kid growing up around all that, you know, and I'm like, huh, now that I know all this and I've been through all the training, hey, this makes so much more sense now. <laughs> yeah. Now, well, it's been fascinating uh, learning from you, Brett, visiting with you, uh, getting, just getting to know you a little bit more. Um, how can folks get a hold of you if they're in southern Illinois and they're like, hey, I'm going to – not even southern Illinois. I mean, you could probably go anywhere in Illinois if it was, if it was ag land, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I cover about 10 counties, <laughs> pretty yeah, much yeah. Pretty much from I-64 all the way down to the Kentucky border. We're right in between um, Missouri, Indiana, and Kentucky. So I can be sure. in any one of those three states within an hour. Um, and then I go north just past us some. Um, I have several different websites. Um I have one, it's uh, bvidian at remax.com. And then we have our office one, which is integrityremax.com. And then I have my farm and ranch one, which let me, uh, I got to look that one Put up. Put you on the way. spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't visited I, that one a whole been, lot. <laughs> that, has been, that has been my trick question today. You are not yeah. the first one to call for that. Uh, to get how do I get a hold of you question? <laughs> Um, so my farm and my farm and ranch website is integrityfarmandranch.com. Nice. And the easiest way to get a hold of me is my cell phone. I mean that's that's my lifeline. It's on me twenty four seven. You know how it is as a realtor. Uh, my phone number is six one eight four nine nine two five two zero. All right. Yeah. And well, I'll send you some links to everything that way. If yeah. you want to put them in the podcast, yeah, we'll, you can. We'll share them out. Um, and uh, there's a little bit more about uh, Brett in the um, in the comments uh, on this uh, podcast. So, but uh, we appreciate you taking the time, sir. Once again, 618-499-2520. Call or text him anytime. If you're uh, looking for a, a land specialist in the uh, in Southern Illinois. And I know like you, uh, like me, uh, Brett, you have uh, a couple of uh, residential specialists in your office. Yes, um, we do. If, if somebody's looking to sell a house, but, um, yep. but yeah, so appreciate you taking the time today, brother. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in Denver, Colorado at the national land conference here coming up in March. So. Yeah. I'm excited for that. That's going to be it's, awesome. Yeah. It's a, it's a heck of a good time and get hopefully, to catch up uh, with all the, 
Hopefully, you and I will be walking across the stage getting our ALC pin. Oh, good grief. You know, like, <laughs> I really don't want to complain, but uh, I li- like I said, they communicated to us, like, there was 44 that applied for their ALC last year, which is spectacular. That's almost double what has ever happened before. Um, and so they come out with communication, and they're like, you know what? We're going to work really hard to get everybody through, and then they just kick out two for December. And yeah. like, so just I think a- they still have about 20 left before uh, before March 1st, so. On a little side note for all the people that are going to watch this, and so you guys understand how rare the ALC designation is. There's oh yeah, just a little over 600 real estate agents in the United States that actually carry their ALC. I know in my state of Illinois, which is a very big state, there's only 35. Once I get my pen, I'll be number 36, and I think I'll be the only one. I know for a fact, because I've done the research, I will be the only designated ALC in all of Southern Illinois. Yeah. So when you guys are looking for land, whether it be in Nebraska, Illinois, Oklahoma, Colorado, it doesn't matter what state, do a little research, find your ALC, and those are the people that you want to do business with. Trust me, we've put a lot of time in training. Was it 105 course hours that we have? Oh, <laughs> oh, it was like five classes. Was it five? Seven. Seven, seven classes. Seven classes. I don't remember. I still, uh, it's. Uh, I've spent a lot of money on therapy to try and uh, mitigate the the pain from that. <laughs> it was great, great education. It was amazing education and stuff. But yeah. yep, but uh, the land conference is coming up, so I look forward to seeing you there, brother. Uh, thanks again for taking the time and. Uh, yeah, I uh, keep in touch with us. I think maybe we're going to be able to work in maybe as a host in the future. Um, oh, and so we're pretty awesome. excited about maybe uh, partnering with you on that. So Sounds um, good to me. I'm ready. All right, man. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening to today's podcast. And we hope that you uh, have a great rest of your day. And we look forward to seeing you the next time. You have been listening to the American Land Seller Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us this week for our program. And we promise to continue to try and find new, exciting, and informative things to discuss every single time. If you would be so kind, please like, subscribe, or follow whatever works on the app you're listening or watching on. We would love for you to keep track of what we're up to. Thanks again, and until next time, God bless you. Have a great week. Today's episode is brought to you by Remax Home Farm and Ranch. Remax Home Farm and Ranch is the premier marketing and selling real estate company in Nebraska and South Dakota. You can find all the great Remax agents and their listings at homefarmranch.com. That's homefarmranch.com. You can look up and see what they're up to and uh, follow along on all the things that they have going on. Once again, this episode is brought to you by Remax Home Farm and Ranch, and you can find their listings and their agents at homefarmranch.com. Once again, home farmranch.com.